So in this video, we're going to talk about warranties. I know that sounds like an incredibly boring subject, but the reason this came up is the last video that you'll see up here, that one, we worked on a car that had a warranty where they said the work was not covered. And it was an enormous amount of work. It was an engine out service. Uh, it was five figures. It's a very large bill on that one. And they said that it wasn't under warranty because of an oil change discrepancy. So this got us thinking, when should you have a warranty? What kind of warranties are there? And uh, when, when should you just take care of it yourself? And this all came up because I posted the video and there were a lot of complaints about, you know, why are you, the, the warranty was totally right, they shouldn't have done it, and, and then defending other warranties, like everybody should have a warranty, and, you're, you're wrong for saying you shouldn't, or you know, for some reason it was based around the warranty, not the work itself, and none of that made sense. But that's where this came up from. So we got to thinking, and got to talking, and there's some fine points to, to come up with here. So when you buy a car brand new, you have a warranty. It might be three years, five years, limited on miles, anything like that. And that's fantastic. If you have software updates or any kind of quirk, uh, this is leaking, that's leaking, anything like that, you can take it right back to the dealer. They'll fix it for free. They might give you a loan a car, depending on that kind of thing. You don't have to worry about it and it's done. And that's fantastic. However, if you modified that car, they might void that warranty. They might be only part of the warranty. They might take the whole thing out. That's up to the discretion of the dealer. So if it is under warranty, it is a brand new car, Think about that, have you done anything that might possibly void the warranty? And we're gonna get a little bit more in depth about that. But then you have aftermarket warranties, and those are more than just the people that call you and say they want to talk to you about extending the warranty on your car that are just spam calls. These are real things. Uh, there are various different services. Sometimes it's per year that you can get this. Sometimes you get a bundle. Maybe you pay X amount of dollars and it covers three years or five years or something like that, and you can cover your car. So we're talking a little about that too. Then there's a third option, when you are the warranty. And I know it kind of sounds stupid, but the way that I look at it as not having a warranty on my McLaren or my Mercedes, I cover the cost of whatever it is that comes up, as it comes up. And on my McLaren, I've had it almost three years, and I've actually done about maybe $2,000 worth of work um, in that three year period. So if you're looking at an extended warranty, the cost of that warranty for McLaren, if I did their warranty, is about $7,000 a year, maybe a little bit more, I think someone told me 7,200, either way, it's, it's a pretty silly number. So in that three years, you're talking about $21,000 to have that warranty. But to get that warranty, you have to take it in, they have to look it over, they have to approve it. If they find anything that they don't like ahead of time, they say, pay us to fix this, and then we'll give you a warranty. So they can give you a $4,000, $5,000, $6,000 bill, you gotta fix this stuff, then they'll warranty it. So you're paying $5,000 to have the ability to pay them $7,000. Sounds kind of stupid, right? So that's $12,000 for the first year, or you can take that $12,000 put it in a savings account that is also interest bearing, so your money is making money, and then if something does come up, pull the money from the account, pay for it. Maybe you have the car for a year, two years, three years, whatever. You have money left over, you can take that money, use the down payment on the next car. Kids college fund, go on vacation, whatever you wanna use it for. You didn't just throw it away. So I know what you're thinking, $7,000 a year is absolutely silly. And it is. And there's other options that are third party warranties outside of the manufacturer, but I think even the McLaren warranty is still a third party. But there's other ones that seem like a better deal. Maybe it's $3,000 a year, but this is where it gets tricky. The McLaren that we worked on is a 2013, 2014? It was under warranty. But it was a 2013, 2014, 12C. 2013 McLaren 12C had uh, 18,000 miles on it? Not very many miles, so 18,000 miles. Not real high mileage. Paid for that warranty, thought he was covered, gave him thousands of dollars. 
as I'm told, he paid nearly $8,000 for a third party warranty, which means it's not the manufacturer of the vehicle, it's not the dealer, it's a third party company, reputable, but they're supposed to know the car and they're going to provide the coverage for expected repairs. Okay, so you have this expectation of it's good to go, whatever comes up. But what came up was a malfunction in the engine that I think was a production problem when the engine was made. A series of things happened in a very specific series of events, caused this issue, where a little spot on the cam got knocked off, which gave a code. Car still drove. They uh, looked in uh, the engine right where the cam is, where there's a sensor, saw it was missing. Okay, there's your problem. Go to the warranty. Warranty says, nope, you're not covered. And the reason it wasn't covered was because in 2016, Prior to this owner owning the car, they saw that an oil change was done four months too late. So you're supposed to do an oil change every 10,000 miles or 12 months, whichever comes first. It went 16 months. Only, what, a few hundred miles? The car had traveled maybe 2,000 miles during the previous 16 months. So the previous owner felt it was more than adequate to wait until he actually sold the car, do the oil change right before he handed the keys over to the new customer. So the new customer could say, I just had my oil changed. I'm good for 12 months or 10,000 miles. And everybody thought that made sense. And the truth is it really did because it's not like the oil expired over those yeah. four months. The oil only had 2,000 miles on it. It was still, it was still just fine. That's not what caused the damage to the engine, but the, Warranty company use that as their loophole to say, we will deny your coverage because you did not maintain the vehicle per the manufacturer's recommended maintenance intervals. This is probably why the topic we're talking about right now has so much power because I personally have owned cars that I thought was under warranty. I bought the car, maybe I'm the second or third owner. It's still under the manufacturer's warranty because it's a low mileage car, late model, just a year or two old. But the previous owner, the original owner, might have changed the oil beyond the 10,000 mile interval. And this actually happened to someone that I sold that car to, not a McLaren, a different car. Realize this can happen with any brand, make, or model. They did the oil change at 12,000 miles, the very first one. The guy I bought the car from, they had done everything under warranty. They looked at the car. I had a few issues with the car, check engine lights here and there. They did all that under warranty, no problem. I changed the oil when I was supposed to. I sold it on to the next customer who did everything they were supposed to. Changed the oil when they were supposed to. They had documentation for it. But they started having a problem that they actually needed an engine. The dealer said, you need an engine. And then they started looking back at the history and said, but we're not going to pay for that $38,000 engine because the first owner in the first year of ownership voided the warranty. And none of the subsequent owners had a clue. As a matter of fact, we had the other things done under warranty. But when it came to the point where the, where the big dollar ticket was going to happen, no. The problem with that is, I think a lot of us believe in the warranty. We just don't realize that we're not documented well for the warranty. Well, well, that's what that's what for me um, is the trust issue, because if it's McLaren, you think okay, we know McLaren, we know they stand behind it, they'll they'll do it. You go to a third party, okay, you're going to save a little bit of money, but are they reputable? Are they going to really do the work well? Are they going to be there when you need them? But my question is going back to what you said, before you get the warranty covered by McLaren, they go through it, say you know what, you need this, this, and that, and then we'll warranty it. Why didn't the third party say? Hey, you know, you missed this oil change, and so we, we can't do it. They waited until the very end and then said, oh yeah, by the way, after you paid us the money, this was void from the beginning anyway. So they didn't even do their due diligence, and that really worries me about the third party. But Dan, Dan I think you already know the answer to that. And Sean can probably jump in. It's profit. They want to take it's your money. Honest, They'll take your money yeah. and tell you you have a warranty. And then if you, ever have, if you never have a claim, great. No big deal. But when you do have a claim, they're going to look for any reason possible to deny that claim. And, and I'm not saying they're all you know, looking for reasons. There's probably good third parties, but how do you know which are good and which are not? That, that's why I wouldn't be able to choose. I'd just say, it's not for me. Instead, I think Sean's gonna tell us what we can do to take care of ourselves. Don't, don't 
don't leave it up to them to tell us how it's going to, okay. the outcome will be. We need to have documentation. Right. Would you agree? Yeah. So, so with documentation, uh, if you go to a third party warranty, because you feel that's, that's the only option. You're not going to service the car yourself. You're not going to repair it yourself. You don't have any independence that you trust. And you just, you don't want to wait for that maybe just huge bill and just that you think that's the way for you to go. And there's nothing wrong with that as long as you know the limitations of that. So you have to make sure that from mile number one, you have all documentation of all service, oil changes, uh, you know, ball joint lubrication. If any manufacturer required maintenance per that manual that they say needs to be done at timed intervals, if they say change your brake fluid every two years, you need to have documentation was done, or you should assume that the braking system could be excluded from your warranty. But that's difficult for someone like me who's a second owner. I have no idea of a lot of the history from the first owner. And I, it would take a lot of research to find out what he did, what he didn't do. Is it true? Is it not true? So the epiphany here is, the epiphany here is you wouldn't want to buy a warranty to cover your braking system if you realize before you buy that warranty that there's no way you can document that the right. braking system has been serviced according to me. Right. See what I mean? Yeah. The engine, the transmission are the two biggies that most people are concerned about and really should be. Oil changes, maybe a transmission fluid change if it's a required interval in the, in the book. If you've bought that car and you don't have that documentation, you should not feel comfortable giving your thousands of dollars to a warranty company yeah. and expecting them to stand behind that warranty. Yeah. Instead, you should do something that's really becoming more popular as people become wise to this, and that's self-insure. Well, that's what made me think twice, because it's not a $500 warranty. We're talking thousands and thousands. Yes. So you really have to weigh you know, the, the risk and reward. Am I, am I gonna need it? If I do need it, will it be covered? If it's covered, is it covered 100%? There, there's so many questions. That's the other consideration. So when you look at a lot of these third-party warranties, they might say, and it excludes these certain things on this car. So mm -hmm. on the Super Series McLarens, you have hydraulic suspension, you have the air brake that is also hydraulic. Um, there's a lot of things that work on the system, including power steering. So if they say, okay, the hydraulic system is not covered, that means your suspension, mm -hmm. not covered. Right. Your air brake, not covered. Your power steering, not covered. Uh, particularly the accumulators, that's one thing that we've seen them eliminate as a, from as, a warranty. as a coverage option right. because that's a common failure so they eliminate it. Uh, the HVAC controls, they might specifically eliminate those mm -hmm. because it's a common thing. That's We know we're going to have to pay out on it. It's not there. So to that point, documentation. Number one, you want to have proof of all the services done before for your own knowledge, right? The car was serviced properly. Number two, you need to take a look at the warranty that they're presenting. It's going to be multiple pages long. It's going to have lots of little legal speak. Read through it and see what the inclusions and or exclusions are. Mm -hmm. A lot of times your eyes will kind of pop open. You're like, wow, I, I assumed it would cover this yeah. item, but they're specifically excluding it. Well, probably because it's an item they had a lot of claims on in the past. They know that, right? But, but for argument's sake, it's not always get the warranty or always don't get the warranty, right? So there's there's all these factors that say, you know what, for me, this makes sense to get the warranty. Yes. And there's, you do the, the calculation, say, well, for me, it doesn't because I'm in a different situation. So you have so, to know the parameters, right? So where we can throw that at is, mine's a 37,000 mile car. Like I said, I've, I've put 2,000 or so into warranty mm -hmm. or, or repairs. warranty repairs. Yeah. Um, and that is the water pump. I had an internal leak that only showed itself when I was doing launch control when it was hot out. But these weren't covered under warranty. These were these would have been your warranty that you paid it. Right. Yourself. So that that's those ones I did myself. The the HVAC displays. Um, in between those two items, those are the only two things I've had anything to do on the car mm -hmm. in thirty seven thousand miles. I paid those out. That was two thousand dollars out. I did the labor on it. So there's something we said for that. It would cost more if somebody else did it. Your car is around 9,000, 9,100 miles? Yeah. So 9,600 miles. You've had it for almost three years. Correct. And how much have you had to put into it repair-wise? Repair-wise were the H HVAC OLEDs and the doors, both of those. So if that was a dealer item, that's probably a $3,000 repair right. at the dealer. I can't think of anything. I mean, it's been a great car. I, mean, I really haven't any issues with it. I've done the yearly service, so you get the oil, the fluids changed, put new tires, but that's all regular that's maintenance stuff. stuff. That's not under a warranty. I really haven't had any 
any issues with it. I mean, I'm, that's why we have to do, have to do a lot of research. Because when I first bought it, I heard all the horror stories. I'm like, oh, my transmission went. And it cost this me all this money. why you feel like you got to buy it. And it wasn't right. sure. But the, the trick is to do your research. Because I went to the forum. And I started saying, okay, what's everybody saying? What goes wrong? You know, what, what's good? What's not good? Okay. And I didn't see too many catastrophic, oh, my God, they're all, engines are all, you know, needing rebuilds. And all. Yeah, there's these little things. And so I did the math and said, for me, I'd rather put it in the bank. And when it happens, it happens. If it's catastrophic, well, that's the roll of the dice because it does happen. But it's just not as often as people want you to believe. And for me, it's worked out fantastic. So, so from there, uh, at the dealer, $3,000 for the displays. Right. And that would have been one year's cost or less. Less, right? You know, for for any given warranty, it was like forty five hundred the first year, and I think now it's gone up to seven thousand. So. so, so you you come out way ahead okay. by not having a warranty. Correct. Now your car is thirty six thousand miles. Thirty six thousand miles. Okay. Twenty twelve MP four twelve C, which is mostly considered to be the highest likely car to have a gremlin because and, it's the first year and yours is an early car as well as mine yes it's, it's so one, we one have those problematic cars one of the first 250 cars built so yeah. what have you had to do to yours so interestingly now my experience range with this cars is a little bit wider having been a car dealer in the past i've had six different 12 c's that i've daily driven and put miles on and being a car dealer when you've got a car and it has a challenge you got to fix it mm -hmm. so my personal car there's really not been much um i've done just like everybody else i've done the displays and the door panels the ac controllers uh a couple things here and there but not again not a lot um let me flip over to some of the other cars i've had i had i had the the tremendous scare i one of the first three cars i had I took the car out and drove it really aggressively, had a great time, parked it for the evening, come back in the morning, and I've got a puddle the size of Lake Erie under the car of transmission fluid. Oh. And, and my heart fell out of my chest mm. because I had heard the transmissions yeah. blow up. That's what I right? heard too. Right. They, they start leaking. And, and so I, not having a warranty, being a car dealer, I've, I've, maybe this is going to sink me. This transmission is for $38,000, I'm told. Mm. I did a little research and I found, you know, some one user somewhere said, hey, it's a little weep hole. And if you plug the weep hole and refill the transmission, it's not like the transmission is not shifting or working. It's just weeping. Mm. As long as you can keep the fluid in, it's still going to work. Well, that doesn't make sense to me. Well, I have about four hours worth of work and two or three dollars worth of parts. I fixed that sucker up. I went and drove it really hard and had a good time. And the next thing I realized was I didn't need a new transmission. Mm -hmm. So the scare that they, where they want to buy me this five, $6,000 warranty wasn't there. And my transmission wasn't bad either. Mm. Several thousand miles later, that car's still going. No problem. Next owner told me he never had a problem. So of all the ones you've had, you've not really had anything of any value that would go above what you would pay in a warranty. No, as a matter of fact, if I was the person who was really concerned about a warranty, take the money and set it aside. Like I think you might have said it earlier, put it in a mm -hmm. savings account. Every year you're on the car, put $5,000 in your savings account. Every time you've got a warranty type repair, pay yourself. Mm -hmm. Statistically, you're gonna have a lot more money in that account when you go sell the car left over. Now, does that vary if you have the earlier, let's say 2012, you know, versus 20, would you say the earlier cars you might want to get a warranty more than you would in the later cars or that doesn't come into play not necessarily i think more people with the, the early cars experience some of the things that were probably resolved in the later cars which they were great example the first year or two the stereo system that was in the mclaren was known to have failures of the screen you couldn't mm -hmm. get it to touch sensitive right the later cars came with an improved stereo system screen Right. So it wasn't a problem. Maybe that's what mine's a 2014, and I took that into account. Yeah, you have Iris right. too. So you've got the improved two. one. And mine was a, one of the later ones made. So I thought, well, by that time, most of it's already, you know, uh, all the bugs are pretty much out of right. it. And mine's an early one with Iris 1, and I don't have any problems with it. Yeah. It has a few quirks. It's the normal quirks. It's yeah. not a functionality thing. Right, right. Something I think it goes without saying for this topic that we're, we're sharing and really bringing to light, because I think the goal of the conversation is, 
to make it aware to everyone else that number one, you may have you may believe your warranty covers you, no worries, no questions asked. The dealer, the third party warranty company, they all have the right to back out of the warranty or exclude a repair mm -hmm. if they can document or prove that you can't document your service intervals, your service history. So number one, if you're a warranty buyer, by all means buy the warranty. But don't do it blindly. Make sure you've got yeah. proof of all the service history and you can document that before you ever spend a nickel on the warranty. If you can't, realize you can cancel the warranty a year after you bought it, mm -hmm. but it's prorated. You paid eight thousand, they're giving you back twenty six hundred dollars. Yeah. It's money down the drain. And I, I totally agree because it's an option. I, I would never say one way or the other, absolutely buy the warranty or don't ever buy the warranty. It's different for everybody, depending on, if you, if, like you said, are you a warranty person? Do you fix a lot of the stuff yourself? It's a lot of, uh, you know, things to consider before you do that. So it might be great for some people, it might not. For me, it worked out great not to do it. And I, I think I made the right decision. I wouldn't do it, if I had to do it again, do the exact same thing. I'm the same way. I even, actually all of my cars, I've only owned one car ever that actually had a warranty. And in that case, that was a brand new Cadillac. I took it back for uh, a couple of recalls, one software update, mm -hmm. and nothing was ever wrong with the car. So in that case, the warranty that it came with in that period was worth nothing. Yeah. Because other than good. peace of mind. And what, you, right. and what right. you said before about putting in a little savings account, you know, and if you need it, well, yeah. I take out of it, and I'm buying carbon fiber trim and I'm, I'm doing all the little fun upgrades with the same money I it would just throw away with for the right. warranty. So to me, and, and the, the longer you keep the car, the more that builds. So right. if, you, if you put 5,000 a year away, first year is 5,000, second year is 10,000, third year is $15,000 you've got stashed away. Mm -hmm. And then let's say something comes up and you go, oh man, I got this big expense, it's $5,000. Mm -hmm. Oh no, you've got $15,000 that you have to pull in, five in, from. Right. In your war chest. Right. And you still have ten sitting there. And maybe just the way I, the way I think, but let's just say I paid eight thousand, seven thousand for a warranty, and then something happened, like with the the engine rebuild you did, it does, it's not covered, and I have to pay, I don't know, twenty thousand. That just cost me twenty seven thousand because You're, that seven's not working for me, and I'm putting out another twenty on top of it. So that's the exact same conversation I have with a gentleman who brought his McLaren to my shop. He shipped it twelve hundred miles. Because even when his warranty company sold to him by the McLaren dealer that sold him the car, mm -hmm. the third party warranty company, when they denied his claim, he then came and said, they don't even want to do a repair. They really just want to replace the engine. Mm -hmm. They said if they did repair the engine, they wouldn't give me any guarantee that it'd ever run again. So they were basically forcing him to buy it, not even give him the option really to. They were basically it. saying it's all or nothing. Yeah. If we go in and fix it for 50 cents on the dollar, we're not going to guarantee you got your 50 cents worth. Mm -hmm. And if we replace the whole engine, then there you go. He shipped the, the car halfway across the country somewhere that would actually stand behind the work and say, we're not going to put all those new parts in the engine unless we know it's going to work. Well, and you documented it, which means you went through it. I mean, it's obvious that you didn't just do it haphazardly. I, I, mean, I want to do like Sean. If you want to see that, go over here. That was amazing. And if I was the owner, I'd be watching and going, wow. And you went through everything meticulously and everything was... So that gives me confidence. Not only did I make the right choice, you know, to do to have it done, but to have it done by you guys, that that, that would mean everything to me. It gives me. That gives me more confidence in doing it out of warranty than anything. That I know there's people out there that can do it. So what, what we've figured from this is if you have a warranty directly from the factory, that's fantastic. But make sure you're not doing anything to the car that will void that warranty. Documentation. Make sure you have all of your documentation in hand before you Road go changes. and buy a warranty. Transmission service. If you look in the owner's manual, every single line item that says don't go a mile over, don't go a day over because it could be one day out and they could very well come and say that was 366 days. It's not a leap year. You're not getting it. Yeah, leap year. Forget about the leap year. Read the, read the contract for the warranty. Look for the exclusions. So is that really based on the dealership? Like there's no set and cut law that says they couldn't do it if they wanted to. Some just say we won't and you might get a dealer that says, yeah, don't worry about yeah, it. Or, that, is that, or is that in writing? That's gonna be discretion. Okay. So you might have a dealer that's just a really good dealer and they, they value their customers and they go, you know what? 
you're a month over, but we're gonna handle it. They're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna kind of go to bat for you with the manufacturer, which when you buy a new car, you're mm -hmm. under the manufacturer's mm -hmm. warranty. The dealer is not the ultimate say so on whether or not you can have they, they may just fudge the paperwork to, so it works in your advantage. Right. Uh, and that's gonna vary by brand too, and specific dealer, because they're usually independently owned. It's not corporate owned. Right. So if you already have a warranty, and all the people that were upset about the last video up here, <laughs> every single one of them that just went ballistic over this, do yourself a favor. Look at the contract on your warranty. Look at all the specifics. Look and see if there are any itemized exclusions. Look if there's any limitations on mileage. You might have a mileage limitation. Look at every little detail and think what part of my car could fail anywhere from the radio to a power mirror to a power seat to the engine itself, the mm -hmm. transmission. Could anything leak? A radiator, a condenser. Maybe your air conditioning stops working. Is that AC compressor covered? Because that is going to be a big deal. Those are big ticket items on every car. So look at every single item and think to yourself, what's the likelihood that could fail and will it be covered? And if you find an item, like suspension accumulators or anything like that, and you go, no, that's not going to be covered. Think about how much that cost, and could you save that? Could you stop getting that warranty? You put that money away, and then say, if it happens, all right, I've got the funds. There it is. You just made me think of something that most people might not consider. A warranty might cost X number of dollars, and then regular maintenance or repairs that would not be under warranty could cost X number of dollars. If you're self-insuring, all the money in your self-insuring account, instead of buying the warranty, can be used for warranty repairs or non-warranty repairs. General maintenance. You give yourself so much more of an advantage by taking that money instead of giving it to someone else to hold on to and hoping they give it back and they don't exclude something. You're in control of that money. Now you can use it for whatever you need. And another thought that I just thought about the warranty is, if you're going to use the warranty, is there a deductible? Mm -hmm. So maybe you paid seven thousand dollars, but there's a thousand dollar deductible per per warranty. Per, yeah. per warranty. So that can end up turn. Say you use that warranty three times, three separate. That's another three thousand dollars. You're ten thousand dollars deep in that mm -hmm. one year for a warranty item that may or may not be covered. I have a question. Okay, so. Understand. You guys have a lot more experience than I do with McLarens, okay? This is my first McLaren, and what I did was, well, I based a lot of my decision on my previous experience with my other cars. I mean, I've had my Lotus for 15 years. I've done nothing to its fronts. It's, it's great, my other car is great. So a lot of, of my, my decision was based on a lot of my experience with a lot of my other cars. How different is the 12C? I mean, is it comparable? Because I thought, well, these cars are, have always been great, so this is just another car, it should be great too. Or is it a whole other animal that, that should be considered differently? Because you've had a lot of them, so you know, is it similar or is it like, just re is it really prone to these things? Or Because to me, it's been a good choice. So I think to, to answer that question, typically people end up buying the warranty because of the unknown. Right. Like I'm, right. I'm used to driving a Toyota every day, I know that's very comfortable. And reliable but I've heard that these McLarens they might not be as reliable I don't know maybe they're more expensive repair. I don't know so I just get the warranty as insurance but that was right. my question when I to myself when I first bought it because I said look in my experience I, I've never really needed the warranty except for when the manufacturer's warranty was in effect all the little bugs for the first few years you get them you know taken care of after that I none of my other cars have really needed it so I based part of my decision on that right not knowing is this a whole different animal that, oh no, no you've never so, had one so of these before? If, if I can answer the question, so when I just described earlier in the video that I had a transmission puddle, I came out after a day of thoroughly enjoying the car and I've got this Lake Erie of transmission fluid in the car. If I had taken that car to the dealer and said, oh Lord, mm -hmm. warranty or not, this has happened to me, the dealer's standard answer is not to repair the transmission, it's replace. That's what they did. Mm -hmm. So the only option they could have offered me was a engine trans uh, excuse me, a transmission replacement, which mm -hmm. is thirty, forty thousand dollars. Right? right? So in that in that realm, 
the warranty just looks so attractive, right? Yeah. Because I'm not thinking of the other options that I have available to me, including a DIY repair or maybe an independent shop repair or a second opinion, mm -hmm. just like going to a doctor. But these cars in particular, like the, the 12C, which, you know, it, that's my experience. I know the 720s are, you know, there's a lot of them out there too, but there's not a whole lot of data that says, yeah, these things are just notorious. Like for, I've had friends that have Ferraris and there's always something going wrong. This is a driver's car. People are driving this car and daily drivers and not having a lot of issues. So that to me just says, you don't really need this extended warranty unless you really want it. But of course it's different for everybody, but that's, that's my, my thinking. I, I think the answer, if someone looked at the statistics, not just isolated instances. There are times when people have a failure that costs a lot of money. It can happen. It happens. That's I get it. I'm not discounting that whatsoever. Right. But statistically, you've got probably the same number of failures or cost or whatever for a Ferrari versus a McLaren versus a Lambo versus an Aston Martin versus a whatever. Maybe even when you get into more economical cars, you compare a Honda to a Toyota. There's, there's probably the same failure rates amongst different different types of cars. Mm -hmm. So. No, I don't think it's statistically any different. I think what happens is most people are fearful, it's gonna to happen to me, so I gotta be careful, mm -hmm. right? Or if it happens to me, can I afford that? Right. $5,000 a year, insurance sounds a lot cheaper than 50,000 for an engine, mm -hmm. right? So people, they're just insuring against that. And, and the funny thing we've mentioned as yeah, insurance is if you have a pre-existing condition mm -hmm. that they don't know about, they can come back and say, oh, no, that was caused by that, and that was like that before. Exactly. Or if they do know about it, will they still cover it, yeah. which we talked about earlier. Yeah. But in my experience with, with my car, I have no reason to ever think I should have gotten a warranty on it. I've never really been that fearful of it. And all of my other cars, between Mercedes, GMC, Cadillac, Honda, uh, I think I've had some other ones in there too, mm -hmm. I've, I've never thought, oh man, I wish I had a warranty on those. I've never here. put enough money Same into here. them. Uh, all my cars never did. That's why I was just wondering, is this a different animal? But I don't think so because for what I can see, they're reliable when something does go wrong. It's not the engine replacement. It's not the transmission. Fill. It's these other it's things. It's a little thing. It's a thousand here or whatever, but it's not what some people want you to believe that, you know, I've seen the other YouTube saying, don't buy this car because, you know, oh, they had a bad experience. So they, you know, want everybody to think it's really not that way. I mean, I can just, again, speak for myself and what I've heard. It's one of the best cars I ever, I ever owned. I love it. I'm glad you're enjoying it. I'm enjoying Oh, I'm enjoying it. Thanks for the uh, power upgrade, by the way. You're, you're welcome. <laughs> you're great. That tune really, uh, oh, the tune brought man. it to life. It's you, like a new machine. Oh you, you, can, you can buy one of those tunes at emfaudios.com, yeah. and uh, he was definitely able to justify, yeah. <laughs> he, he was definitely able to justify spending the $4,000 on a tune because he, did. he didn't yeah. spend it on yeah. a warranty. That was fun money that you can just, oh, there you go. Exactly. You that's cannot that's modify I mean. your that's car if you have a warranty and expect them to still cover it, just keep that in mind too. If you got a manufacturer's warranty with one mile on your car or you got an aftermarket warranty with mm -hmm. 50,000 miles, it doesn't matter. Any modifications to the engine or the powertrain, just realize you, you voided the warranty. So if you bought it, you just wasted your money. And if you do have a warranty already, you should probably just go ahead and cancel that and save your money because <laughs> they're gonna deny anything that comes up when they find out your car is modified. Mm -hmm. So now that we've had this lengthy discussion and understanding of warranties, don't put all your hateful comments in there saying about how <laughs> indestructible your warranty is and how it's great and wonderful and whoever it is that it's through will cover anything. The magic warranty. Look at the specifics of your warranty. If you have a warranty, do that now and then analyze it and say, is this really gonna be anything for me? And if it's not, cancel it. Um, Get your money back. You know, and, and that's when people, three people have the car. This isn't like, you know, conjecture. This is, you got one, you got, I have one. This is experience. So, I, and I, he's not a DIY I, guy. If anything goes wrong, no. he's paying the labor for it. This guy, yeah, yeah. He'll pay me the labor for it. <laughs> but still, that's a consideration of, yeah, you, you might pay more for labor, but you're probably still going to come up ahead. I'm way ahead. I'm way ahead. From, from paying the warranty yeah. cost. Yeah. So if you found this video informational, and uh, helpful, and you have any other insight or any other comments regarding your warranty, maybe you had a good experience or a bad experience where you thought it was worth it mm -hmm. or not worth it, comment that below.
And I feel like you had something to say. No, I, I, I totally agree with what you're saying. You know, sh share what your experience has been. I found as I start having this conversation and topic with other people I know in the car business or maybe customers or employees or whatever, you know, I'm, I'm hearing stories that I didn't even realize. And so that's given me more knowledge to make decisions. And, and we have, I have no vested interest yeah. in whether someone buys a warranty or not. I'm just telling you my personal experience and just trying to help like other people have helped me, um, you know, whether it's you know getting an aftermarket part or doing something to the car. I just want to get opinions and make my own decisions. So that's, you know, that's where... And if, you, it, it and if you are a warranty person, fantastic. There's nothing wrong with that. But absolutely document. Go look at your documentation and make sure there's no holes in the documentation. Because if you ever do need the warranty, I promise you, that will be the first name request from you. So remember, this doesn't apply to just McLaren's. It's literally every yeah, car out absolutely. there. So share this video with somebody you know that has a warranty so they fully understand everything that's going on, how it really works. Uh, hit like and subscribe and follow me on Instagram and Facebook and all the other stuff that you follow things on. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. Make sure you share this with everybody you know with or without a warranty. Cheers.